Hello, my name is Michael Ramage. I'm the director of the Cyber Education Research Center at Murray State University, and welcome back to Cybersecurity Fundamentals. Cybersecurity Fundamentals is a video series designed to provide simple steps that you can take to keep yourself safe, to keep your family safe, and to keep your organization safe in cyberspace. This video is going to focus on home networking safety. Things that you can do to keep and secure your home network. So let's just get into it. First of all, before I, I, I really get into the security aspects of it, we need to understand what we're talking about. Your home network you probably get home internet. If you have broadband at home, you get it from one of, of a couple of sources. You get it from a wireless provider, which is probably the minority of folks. Um, you get it from a cable provider, fiber from a, an internet uh, provider, or you may still have some legacy uh, DSL from your telephone company as well. Um, most people have wired broadband at home. Some have wireless it doesn't matter how you have it. It probably comes into your house and connects to a modem. If you have cable modem, fiber, DSL, it's going to come in probably through the wall. There's going to be an outlet. You plug it into it. It goes into your modem. From your modem, you connect in to a wireless router. That wireless router sends the signal all throughout your house. And I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Some the modem and wireless router are together. Some are separate. I recommend that you separate those, and, and I'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Um, from your wireless router, it gets spread all throughout your house. So from that, that broadband gateway, from that wireless, wireless router, it goes to your audio system. Uh, it may go to your TV, your computer, uh, your media center, your printer, um, your security system. This graphic shows a lot of different things that are connected to your wireless network. And let me say, it doesn't even touch the possibilities. There's also the home automation, whether that's your thermostat, your refrigerator, your garage door, your, your wireless um, water meter, your dishwasher, your washer and dryer, your refrigerator. There's so many different things that that could be connected to your home wireless internet. We talked about entertainment related items, but we also didn't talk about healthcare related items, whether it's a blood pressure machine, a scale, uh, something that is, is taking your pulse or your, um, your glucose uh, a a meter. There's so many different things that are connected to your wireless network. So there's two reasons that we're talking about securing your home network. First of all, all of these devices, all of these devices have personal information on them that you should protect from anybody wanting to gain access to them. And then the second reason is because more now than ever, we are working from home. More than ever, we are using our home office. Maybe we're... Uh, we're teleworkers, or maybe we're just doing work at home. But what COVID showed us is that there is the opportunity for us to work from home. Now, if I were going to try to break in, hack into your work office or your home office, which one do you think is more secure? Think about all the money that has been spent securing your work office and all the money that has been spent securing your home office. Your home office is way more vulnerable to cyber attack than your work office. I'm not saying don't secure your work office, but what I am saying is that we unknowingly, many of us, have a vulnerability in our home, both for our personal information and for access to our network. So let's talk about some things that you can do. First of all, as I alluded to, avoid using your ISP supplied router. You want the ability to modify your router, to secure it, to make it as secure as possible, to help make your home network as secure as possible. So we want the ability to configure that and customize it. Don't use the ISP supplied router. 
personally, I don't use the ISP supplied router or modem. Both of those have added me a little bit more security. And frankly, uh, it's increased the reliability because the router and modem that my provider uh, uh, gave me or rented to me uh, was much more, uh, was much older, much less secure, uh, much more prone to messing up and having to be reboot. So I got my own. My home network is more safe, is more secure, it's safer, uh, and it's also faster. When you do get that router, first thing you want to do is change the default name and password. You want to change the default name and password because every router gets set to default password. Now, vendors are getting better about this, but if your home router is very old at all, then it's very possible that I can tell you what your name and uh, username and password is for your router. That's not good. You don't want people to be able to guess what that is. Um, so you want to turn that off. You also want to turn off external access and broadcasting, name broadcasting. External access is would allow people from outside of your home network to come into your home network. You don't want that. Even if you're accessing things outside of your network, even if you have tools inside your network that are going to go um, externally, they're initiating the conversation internally. So you don't need to have that external access on. Name broadcasting would allow everybody to know the name of your home network. Now, that doesn't provide a lot of security, but it provides a little bit. And it's enough that you want to make sure that you, um, you turn that off. Update your firmware. Um, you Vendors, whether it is your computer, your operating system, or your home router, um, they update their software when there are security problems. So if there are firmware updates for your router, then you need to make sure that you update those. You want to use your guest network and you want to choose a complex password. The guest network is going to force visitors to your network to be on a separate network, meaning they're going to be over here and not be able to see what you're doing on your home network. That's important because of all that personal information that's floating across your wireless network that we've just talked about. And then you want to choose a complex password so that people can't guess your Wi-Fi password, that people can't guess your administrator password that we told you that you needed to change before. Choose complex passwords. We've talked about passwords in the past. Passwords are important, whether they're user passwords, whether they're router passwords, whether you're Wi-Fi passwords. Those passwords are very important and important way to keep you safe. The last two things I'll say is you want to disable uh, Wi-Fi protected setup, WPS. Uh, WPS was a great idea. It was going to allow you to push a button on the front of your router and it would automatically connect the device to it and set it up. Uh, the problem was it got hacked and it can be compromised pretty quick. It's, it's not a secure way to set up anymore. And you want to enable network encryption. Network encryption means that when you're connected to the wireless, that your data is being encrypted across that wireless connection. So from you to that wireless router, your information is encrypted. The reason that's important is that if there are any visitors, if there are anybody within range of your wireless network and they're sniffing your traffic, if they're looking to see what they can see, they're just going to see gibberish because it's encrypted. So that's an important piece. So let me finish by going back to our home network. I mentioned already that our home network is much more vulnerable than our workplace uh, uh, is, and it's, that's going to continue to be true. I'm not suggesting that you invest thousands of dollars to secure your home network, although maybe you do that depending on what your, uh, where you work or, and, and what you do at your home. But what I am saying is that there are some simple steps that we can take to secure our home network to make it safer so that the, the personal information that's floating around our home network is safe and any work that we're doing from home is protected as well. These are simple steps that we can take. I would encourage you to do them. I hope you found this helpful. If you want more information on any of these steps uh, to talk through any of these things more, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you next time on Cybersecurity Fundamentals. Thank you.